Hi everyone, welcome back to building a game from scratch. This is lesson three, and in this lesson, we're gonna talk about how we can duplicate our character for our next level. We're gonna add a scoreboard, and we're gonna add some rewards so we can build a score. In the last lesson, we created a character and we wrote some code to allow the character to actually move around the screen and not walk through the walls, okay? And we did that by writing this code here. So when the left, right, up and down arrows are pressed, the Y and X axis changes. When it hits a color, then it reverses that change and so reverses direction. So the next thing we're gonna do is add our character to our second level. Now this is relatively easy to do. So we're gonna click on our backdrops here and up to backdrops and then go to our second level. And we can see here, this is our second level here. Now you notice the cats are still there. Now we want this cat to appear, but we want our level one cat to disappear because we need to duplicate that cat. Right, so let's go to our level one cat, and let's go to the scripts. And what we need to do is we need to add a new event here. So we're gonna to go to events, and when the backdrop switches to level two for this particular character, we want to hide the cat. We go to looks, and we hide the cat. Now, if we want to test out whether this is gonna hide, remember this is the level one cat, we can double click on this, and then we can see that the cat has disappeared when it goes to level two. So now what we need to do is make sure that we have a character for our second level. So we can duplicate our level one cat. So if we right click on our cat, we can go to duplicate, and now we have a duplicate cat. So we click on our little eye there, we can change the name of this, and we're gonna change this to level two cat and then we can just press this arrow and then go back. So now we have three characters here, our level two cat, but our level two cat has disappeared. And so now we need to check that our conditions and our scripting is correct. So this is all referring to the level one cat. So now we need to refer to the level two cat. So when the backdrop switches to level two, we want that to happen. When the backdrop switches to level two, we want all of this to happen. And when the backdrop switches to level one, all right, because we don't want the level two cat to appear in level one, we need it to hide. And now we've got everything set for our cat. So we should be able to click on this, and there is our cat moving along just like it does in level one. But the issue is our cat has started in the wrong position, okay? So what we need to do is move our cat to the correct position, and we need to shrink the cat down, otherwise it's not gonna get through the maze. So. Let's click on shrink and click it a couple of times. And there we've got our cat and it should be able to get through this maze quite easily. However, over here, this value here is referring to the position of the level one cat. So we need to change that now. So let's go back to motion, all right? And we can do this one of two ways. We can see here that the coordinates of the level two cat are here and this is the level one. We can either delete this and put this in, or, which I'm gonna do, is I'm just going to copy the values there. So this is 57, and this is 166. Now our level two cat will start in the correct position. So let's now play the game and see what happens. So we click on the flag, we press the space bar. Ah, we have a problem. How can I get to level two? So what we need to do, we need to establish an end point for our cat. So when the cat gets to the end of the maze, it will go to level two. So we need to actually program that in. So let's stop the game. Here is the end of the game. Now there's several ways you can do this. You can either put a reward at the end, so when it hits the reward, it goes to the next level, or we can put a white box here. There's lots of different ways you can do this. So we're gonna actually do a reward. So. Let's go to a sprite. So let's click on sprites and I want to choose something appropriate for the level. So I'm gonna click on things and let's have X. X marks the spot. So let's click okay. And there is our X. So we want our X to end up here. So 
Let's change the size of our X to here and let's make that just a little bit bigger and then just move it into the correct position. So now we need to set some conditions for our X. Now, first of all, let's click on our eye and let's give this an appropriate name. So level one end point. Okay, so that's our level one end. So what needs to happen here? When our flag is pressed, all right, in our scripting for our X, we want it to hide. So let's go to hide. All right, because we don't want our X to appear in our title screen. So let's go back to our event. When the backdrop switches to level two, we also want it to hide. So let's go back to looks and hide. Let's go back to events. When the backdrop goes to level one, we want it to show and we want it to appear at this position. So if you remember, we go back to motion and we go to this position here. So let's try this now. So we click on our flag, press the space bar, and there is our X, okay? It's not appearing in our title screen. As you can see, it's not there. When we press space bar, it will appear. Now what we want to do is when our cat hits the X, we want it to do something. We want it to go to level two. So let's go to our level one cat and we're gonna add some more script in here, okay? So let's scroll down here and what we wanna do is we want to add something in here. So we're gonna to go to our control and we're gonna say, if something is going to happen, then we want it to do something. So in here, we want to add when it hits the end point, we want something to happen. So sensing when the cat is touching, the level one end point, we want something to happen. So if we go to looks and then we come down here and we can see switch backdrop. Okay, so we're gonna click on switch backdrop to level two. So now, as soon as that hits the end point, it's going to go to level two. So let's try that. So let's play our game, press the space bar and let's get our cat to the end. And there we go, it goes to level two. So as you can see, that was a little bit too quick. So what we wanna do is we wanna add a little bit of a pause there and maybe something happens at the end of level one. So let's add a sound to this. So first of all, we need to import the sounds. So let's go to sounds, and then we're gonna click on, from the sound library, let's go to human, and let's play clapping. Okay, so that's a, that's a good end one. So we're gonna use clapping. So we're gonna have that and we're gonna click on OK. So now we have our clapping sound. We can go back to scripts and we're gonna add a sound. So play a sound, play clapping sound. So, but we want that to happen before it goes to level two. And let's go back to the sound and see how long that is. So we can say maybe a, a few seconds. So what we can do is we can add in there from control Let's wait maybe three seconds. So let's play this now and see what happens. Okay, there you go. It goes straight to level two. And now a level two is ready to go. So now what we need to do is add a score to this game. So to do that, we need to click into data and we need to make a variable. So we're gonna call this variable score. We want it to apply for all sprites. We don't want the score to be reset. So let's click on okay. And there we have our score coming up here. So let's put this in the right place. We're gonna put it here. And now we have all these different options here. So set the score, change the score, show variable, et cetera, et cetera. So let's think about what we need to do here. When the game starts, we want the score to be zero. So let's go to our backdrop for the beginning of the game. So let's go to our backdrops here and backdrops, and this is our title screen, and let's go back to scripts, okay? So when the game starts, we want to set our score to zero. But as you can see here, when we play the game, our score is showing. So we want to hide the variable until 
we get to level one, okay? So now when we play it, our variable has disappeared. So when our spacebar is pressed, we already switched to level one. So we also want to show the variable score, okay? So let's play that and see what happens. Press the space bar and there is our score, it's appeared, okay? When we stop and press play again, it disappears until we press our space bar and there is our score. So that's how we add a score. Now we have to have some kind of reward so we can get a score. So we're gonna add a new sprite. So let's add a new sprite and I'm gonna choose apples. So let's take the apple and then click okay. So that's gonna insert an apple in. Now I want to insert that apple somewhere. So I'm gonna take it here and let's just reduce that and shrink it down to a reasonable size. So there's my apple and then I'm gonna just make sure that that's in the right place. Now when my cat now eats the apple, I want something to happen. So first of all though, we have to set our parameters for Apple. So let's go to event. When it's clicked, we want the Apple to hide. When the backdrop reaches level one, we want it to show. And we also want it to show in the position that it's currently in. So therefore, we need to go to motion and then go to this point. So we're gonna get the apple to show at this point, okay? Now what we want to think about is when the cat hits the apple, we want the score to go up and we want the apple to disappear. So let's go to control and let's do a forever loop, which we've done before. And in here, if something happens, and then let's go to sensing. If this is touching, so let's put that in, the level one cat, so if the apple is touching the level one cat, we want it to disappear. So let's go to looks and hide, and let's put a sound in as well. So let's go to sounds, there's a pop, so I'm gonna take the pop, okay, and we're gonna to go to scripts here and then we're gonna add a sound and let's play the pop, okay? So let's play this now. All right, so press the space bar, let's go along. And there we go. However, what we want is the score to now go up. So you can choose what score that you want. So let's put in here, let's go back to our data and we want to change the score by, let's say, 20. Okay, so every time we get an apple, our score goes up to 20. So let's stop this and then let's play, press the space bar and let's have a look and then we go pop and there we've got our score is at 20. So that concludes lesson three of our build a game from scratch. In the next lesson, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna duplicate the rewards. So we've got various rewards in the maze and we're gonna add a timer. So we have to have a set time in order to get to the end of the maze.